today, this month, this year, henceforth, I say it well. I, I of this generation. At this moment, wherever I go, wherever I am, whoever I meet, I am victorious. Confirmed in your life. Affirmed in your life. Nothing on earth. Nothing in hell, nothing in the jungle, nothing in the river will change that. You are victorious in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand. And then in your heart, understand, you are different from today. You are no more what you used to be. Father, in Jesus' name. I pray the spirit of the conqueror, the spirit of the victor, and the spirit of the achiever will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. The past is forgiven. The past is forgotten. A new day today. A new energy today. A new focus today. I pray the power to be victorious in this generation. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Victorious. Amen. Unstoppable. Amen. Let it happen to every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm me to Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. The Lord is going to take you today. Amen. And he's going to move you to the very highest point of what he created you for. In Jesus' name. Pursuing a purpose-driven life to it speak. I'm reading to you from Acts chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 16 it says but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. You are going to notice in that verse of scripture, I read to you now the word V, T H double E. That's the old way of saying you. And so the Lord was talking to a man at this time, and he said, V. He said, Rise. He said, Stand up. Upon thy feet, he said, because I, the maker of heaven and earth, I, the one that can turn your life around, I, the one that can remake you, can remodel you, and the one that can reform your life, he said, I, that I, the I am that I am. The great God of heaven, the maker of heaven and earth, and the one that takes the life of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and turns it in the right direction, that I is talking to you today. And he said, I have appeared unto thee. Unto thee. There were many people traveling with Saul of Tarsus that day. But in particular, this God of heaven, this creator, this one that can reform life, this one that can make him all over again, he pointed at him, he said that at him, he focused on him and said, I have appeared unto thee. And so as you are here today, you forget 
everything of the past. You forget everyone around, and you say, He has appeared unto me, unto thee. Then he says, For this purpose. You see, life, if life is going to have a meaning, it must have purpose. If you're going to drive your car, your vehicle, if you're going to drive it to a destination, you must have a purpose in mind. And you must say, I am driving to such a place. That's life. If your life is going to get to the peak, you must drive with a purpose. If your life is going to achieve uh, the highest, you must drive for a purpose. If your talents are going to be made use of in the right way and in the right manner to get to the place the Lord has ordained for you, you must drive uh, with a purpose. If you're going to amount to anything in life, you must drive uh, for a purpose. And everything you need to know. I've heard about other people. They made it. They were innovative. They took initiative. They had interest. And then uh, they got to the place. I'm just wondering, how did they get there? It will come to you now. You will get there in Jesus' name. Pursuing a purpose-driven life to its peak. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the regrets of pursuing money and materialism. The people who think all of life it's made up of money or materialism. The regrets they have. How they labor for the wind. How they labor without a purpose from heaven dropped in their heart. Number two, the responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. Our maker, your maker, your creator, your redeemer, the almighty God. He made you like no other person. He made you unique. He made you special. And he has something your day that you will be, that you will do, that you will achieve, that cannot be duplicated by another person on earth. And then you discover that. And then you said, my maker, when he made me, when he created me, he created me so that I will fulfill a particular mandate. And then you have the responsibility of pursuing that mandate of your maker. Number three, our reassurance while pursuing his mission towards men. Our lives are to impact men, impact our community, impact our country, impact everyone around. And he gives us reassurance that while we are pursuing his mission towards men, that he will do some things for us, in us, through us, by us, that will make us get to the peak and get to the place we must get to. You will get there. With the power of heaven, you will get there. With the unfailing power of God, you will get there. Our responsibility as we move on and we get, we're involved in the mission towards men. That responsibility the Lord has given us, and we're going to achieve that in Jesus' name. One, two, and three, and I will get there. You will get there. Number one, the regrets of pursuing money and materialism. I want you to look at his story. It's the story of a man pursuing money, materialism, and at the end of the day, he found himself 
that he had been a foolish man. You will not be a foolish man. I will not be a foolish man. You will not be a foolish woman, foolish boy or foolish girl. The wisdom of heaven will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at the story. It's in Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life, this Christ talking, talking to the people, talking to us, talking to you, beware of covetousness, money, money, money. Wake up in the morning, money. How are you going to get it? Gambling. Money. How are you going to get it? Through fraud. Money. How are you going to get it? Through cheating other people. Money. How are you going to get that? Cutting corners. Money. How will you get that? Abandon education. Abandon personal development. And get to other people. Get what they have. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And then he tells us in verse 16. In verse 16 there he tells us. And he spake a parable unto them saying. The ground of a certain rich man, money, of a certain rich man, materialistic man, of a certain rich man, popular man, of a certain rich man, progressive man, physically, of a certain rich man, brought forth plentifully. And then in verse 17, it says, And he thought within himself, and he thought within himself. Now he didn't think about God. He didn't think about heaven. He didn't think about what the future destiny will be. He didn't think about his community. He didn't think about improving the lots of men and women around him. He thought of himself. He thought by himself, he thought for himself, he thought within himself, everything revolved around himself. You know people like that, I want to be happy, that's the only thing they think about. I want to have a lot of wealth, that's the only thing they think about, me, me, me. And they never think, how can I improve the world in which I am? How can I improve the conditions of people around me? I want to be a doctor because I'm concerned for the people who are suffering. That's a good way to think. I want to be an engineer because I'm concerned about some of these rickety things that people are doing and building. And I want to raise up a structure that will stand all the vicissitudes of life. That's the way to think. I want to bring shelter to people. I want to bring happiness to people. Thinking about other people. You want to so live. You want to so labor, you want to so work, and you want to so get something that will impact your generation, that will impact the lives of other people, that will make life better for everyone around. But this one, he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? I, because I, that's another I, have no room where to bestow my fruits. Everything is selfish. Everything is just for himself. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, then he said, this will I do. The man did not know that any person is living on earth. My fruit, my crops, my produce, the result of the labor of my hand, how can I make the life of another person better? How can I lift up another person? How can I educate somebody? How can I bless a family? How can I put joy, laughter, food, clothing, shelter on other people? No, no, no. It wasn't thinking about that this well. I do. 
I, another I then, I'll pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I, the man is full of I, I. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Look at verse 19. And I will say to my soul, my neighbors are hungry. That wasn't his concern. And the roads are bad. I can do something about that with my wealth and riches. That wasn't his concern. People's lives are not secured. And I can do something to bring security to them. That was not his concern. But I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat and drink, and be merry. Eat and drink, and be merry. That's a one-man party. He had this intention, and he had this goal. Eat every day, and be sumptuous every day. Enjoy life every day. Other people are sick, don't, don't talk about that to me. Other people are down, don't talk about that to me. Other, you know, they're dying, they're dying, don't talk about it to me. You can do something. You can help other lives. That's not important to me. I myself, I want to take my ease and eat and drink and be merry. Now look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, but God said, he didn't think about that, but God said, the God of heaven who put him on earth, but God said, the God that prospered him, but God said, the God that made his foes to bring forth plentifully for a purpose, the purpose of being a help and the purpose of helping other people. He didn't think about that, but God said unto him, the fool. He was a rich man, but was a fool. His cross brought forth plentifully, but he was a fool. He was a successful farmer, but he was a fool. He was a successful professional, but he was a fool. He was a talented man, but he was a fool. He was a go-getter. And then anytime, anything he dreamt of, I get this, I get that, a go-getter. But he was a fool. He was a prosperous man with plenty of everything desirable in life. But he was a fool. If God the Almighty calls somebody a fool, that person is a real fool. Who is a fool? Somebody who is a lie. And he did not think about why God made him, why God put him here, why God gave him a good brain, why God gave him success, why God gave him plenty, why God gave him everything that his neighbors will need. Now, a rich man cannot sleep on two beds at the same time. He cannot live in two houses at the same time. He cannot enjoy uh, two uh, meals, different meals at the same time. You're giving that extra so that your life will prosper. Other people, the regrets of pursuing only money and materialism. God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Now, the Lord wants to give us the explanation, the application of that parable he has told. Look at verse 21 now. It says, so is he. So is everyone. And so are you. And so is he. And so is she. And so is everyone that layeth up treasure for himself layeth of treasure not for the community not for the country not for the commonwealth not for the nations not for the upliftment of other people so is he so is she that layeth of treasure for himself so is he that has a bulging bank account a lot of money, he doesn't want to spend the money. He doesn't want to touch the money. I want it to reach a million. 
I want you to reach 10 million. I want you to reach 100 million. I want you to reach a billion. I want to be called a billionaire. And that is the goal in life. But what he has is not you seen. His mother is sick. He cannot touch that money and take care of the mother. The father is sick, he cannot take that money and care for the father. The wife, the husband, the children, uh, they are impoverished. He cannot take anything to take care of them. And I go to be a millionaire. People are dying around me, but I don't care. I want to be a millionaire. So is he and so is she that lays up treasure for himself. And it's not rich toward God. It's not rich toward God. How do we become rich toward God? Helping his creatures, lifting up the falling, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, educating uh, the orphans, and helping people who cannot help themselves. You know, sometimes uh, already you have uh, money, you have the material things, and somebody gets into trouble, and uh, you know he's poor already, and then he says, uh, he comes to you and he says, can you help me? I'll try, but what do you want? I need so much, all right, I will lend you this amount of money, but you will pay interest 25%. I don't even have the capital, and my life is down there on the ground, so how can I do that? Well, that's my condition. They lay up treasure for themselves, but they are not rich towards God. When you take care of the poor, when you educate the orphans, when you heal those who are sick, when you help those who are helpless, when you give hope to the hopeless, that's when you are rich towards God. But this man, the regret of pursuing money and materialism, and God said, today, this night, this day, your life will be taken away from you. And then you go to the other side. Who shall those things be that you have taken up? Those are the people. Let's trace their lives of regret. Number one, I'm looking at those people now who concentrate. I get this. Um, capture that, I will build this, I will do this, I'll do that, but you don't ever help anyone. How do you trace their lives? Number one, they have success without salvation. Success without salvation. It appears they are successful when you see what they have planted, when you see what they have gathered together, when you see their bank account, when you see how they join from house to house, from nation to nation, but they have success without salvation. Number two, satisfaction without sonship. God, who wants to be their father, they have not yielded to him. All I want, money will satisfy me. Material things will satisfy me. Satisfaction without sonship. Number three, substance without spirituality. Tangible things, touchable things. The things they have in life, that, that's mine. You know how many cars I have? You know how many houses I have? And you know how many buildings I've raised up? You know how many degrees I have? And you know how many women are you know, following me in life? Uh-huh. Substance without spirituality. Their soul, their spirit, their heart, their life, the one that will go to God when they die, they have not made preparation for that. There's no salvation, there's no sonship, and there's no spirituality. Number four is stature without a savior in the community. They try to have a great stature. You know, anywhere they see that, you know, there are people, they want to be the leader there. I am a natural leader, and I am an achiever, and I want to go there there so that I can be taller than everybody there. They have stature, but there's no salvation, there's no savior. The most important thing in the life of a person is to make sure that first of all, whatever I build, whatever I save, whatever I gather, whatever I amass, and whatever I acquire, I have Jesus, the lover of my soul, as my savior, lest 
you have stature without a savior. There are people, you know, I've discovered my skill, I've discovered my talent, and there is one thing important to me. I'm going to develop this skill until I achieve whatever. Name it and claim it. I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. Stop for a moment. If you have skill, where there's no shelter, there's no shelter for your soul. When you die, then Satan will come, the evil angels will come and carry you to the other side. And there is no one, no angel, no God, no savior, no redeemer to defend you. Where will you be? Skillfulness without a shelter. Number six, self-sufficiency without service. Did you see that man? I read his story to you. I will break down my bands. I'll build another. I will acquire this. I will acquire that. Self-sufficiency without service. He wasn't ready to serve any other person. I'm, I'm asking you what you have. Are you able to serve another person? You say, I'm just a child. How can I serve? You know, when I was uh, younger, after I became born again, a real child of God now, in my class, year one at the university, because I, God gave me the knowledge and everything with that mathematics and, uh, you know, they teach it for the first time and the thing sticks in my brain. We had an old man in our class. So this old man, everything the lecturer had been saying for the past one hour, he got nothing out of that. And when we finish, we have a free hour after that. He said, William, come, you know old man that I am, that everything the lecturer was saying, I got nothing. And then we'll sit down for the next one hour and I will teach him again what the teacher, the lecturer had said. Even though I wasn't giving him money, I was giving service, service, free of charge. And the next uh, lesson again, the next uh, lecture again, he'll call me, William, I'm here, please help old man. And then we'll sit down and then I teach him over and and over and I discovered that's what I've been doing not just for him in year one that's what I've been doing uh, even before that time that whatever you have you have sufficient you have sufficient knowledge and sufficient uh, impact on other people and you're serving now with what you have uh, are you going to serve other people that's life that's life it is for you to get something you know, and then impact the lives of other people Paul, and know the joy of serving, serving others. Number seven is sensuality without sensibleness. Sensibleness. There are people that live the life of, you know, they eat and they drink and they have pleasure and they're all flesh with flesh and, you know, that's all they do. But then they're not sensible. Where does this drive me? If I eat all that, I become obese and I become overweight. Where does that lead me? If I get this and I have, uh, you know, disease uh, out of that pleasure, where does that lead me? They never think sensuality without sensibleness but the Lord is calling us he says your life will not be a waste I said your life will not be a waste and you will look at life and you understand that the life you live now is to be in service to other people so that you will not be like this foolish man we're seeing the man on the wrong path I want to turn now to the man on the right path. I want to talk to you. I said I want to talk about you. I said I want to talk about you. We're not going to the man on the right path. We're looking at point number two now. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. That word responsibility, I want you to break that word responsibility into two. Responsibility. Responsibility. 
The Lord is giving you a mandate. It's giving you a goal. It's giving you a direction to follow. And it gives you the ability to respond. And you respond in an able manner. In a way that is quantitative, qualitative, measurable. You respond with the divine ability the Lord has given you. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 43. We're looking at verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, everyone without exception, I pray you will fit in. You will fit in. I will fit in. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. You will bring glory to God. Your talent will bring glory to God. Your ability will bring glory to God. Your vision, your focus will bring glory to God. And your activities, your actions, your habit, everything you do will bring glory to God in Jesus' name. Your inventions will bring glory to God. Your helping other people will bring glory to God. Your impact in the lives of other people who are suffering in our world will bring glory to God in Jesus' name. Your life will no more be selfish. My life will no more be selfish. Your life will no more be self-centered. My life will no more be self-centered. He created you for a purpose. Everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him. Do you accept that? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Did he create you? Yes. Did you create yourself? No. Did Satan create you? Did those uh, gang uh, members of the gang, did they create you? Oh. How is it that those gangs will be so selfish and take who they have not created and then use for their purpose and then draw you away, snatch you away from the one who has created you and say, forget about the creator, forget about your maker. Forget about the one that gave his only begotten son for you that you'll not perish but have everlasting life. And he said, forget about your benefactor. And then just live for them. That's selfish. I will not be their slave. I will not be their captive. I will not be the, their errand boy, their errand girl. Even everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, yes, I have made him. The Lord has made you. Now, when the Lord made Adam and Eve, they did the wrong thing. They became a mess. They became mediocre. They became miscreants. And then the Lord came to them again so that he can bring them back to the original position he created them. That's why he said Jesus. So that as your life is now, maybe your life is messed up. The Lord made you. But now look at your condition. Look at your thoughts. Look at your life. Look at your direction. Look at who you are. That's why we're here. That instead of being a misfit, I will not be a misfit. I will not be a misfit. I will not be a misfit. What does he do to bring you back to the place he made before? Number one, he melts you. Melts you. You see, when you hear something uh, that makes you to think, that's right. Am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right place? Is this what I should be at this age with a Bible in my hand? 
with a God in heaven, with a Christ who died for me, and with all these speakers who are talking to me, and everybody wants my development and growth. How am I like this? Number one, he melts you. Number two, he molds you. After melting you, you see, if that rod of iron remains like it is, without going through the fire of melting, you cannot mold it to the right shape, but he melts you, then he molds you. Then he makes. That means he corrects the things that were wrong. That's why he says, don't go that way, he's mending you. That's why he says, don't talk that way, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't drink that thing, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't smoke that thing, it's mending you. He melts you. He molds you. He makes you. He monitors you. He wants to know, I want to make him, I want to get him back to the original. Many people, they are just duplicates. And they are not good duplicates at that. You are duplicate of this and duplicate of that. And then you don't have a singular life that means much to you, much to your family, much to your community. But then the Lord now says, he monitors you. He says, come back, come back. That's not the way. He says, go to the right. This is the way. Walk ye therein. He monitors you. He mentors you. That's why he sends people across your way that will teach you. That's why he sends people across your way that will make you stand up straight. That's why he sends messages up to you saying, don't allow this year to go again like last year went. And so he mentors you. He tells you, he helps you to be what you ought to be. And I pray as the Lord has come to remodel your life, I pray you will not say no to the Lord in Jesus' name. And then he models you. He wants you to be a trophy. He wants you to be somebody other people can look up to. And the Lord will say, that's a model follow after his life, that's a hero, follow after his life, that's a champion, follow after his life, that's a conqueror, uh, follow after his life, and the Lord through this period, and even today, will make you a model in Jesus' name, and then he makes you a master, that you master, he masters you, and then you are able to master other things in your life with great mastery that will get you back to where he wanted you to be. And he says, even everyone that is called by my name, for I, the Almighty, I, the Creator, I, the Reformer, I, the Recreator, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, he said, These people, these people have I formed for myself. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Are you part of the people? Or are you? Amen. 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 I'm so happy for you. New things are going to begin to happen in your life. New direction in your life. New power in your life. Whatever has become a mess of life, of a life in you, the Lord is going to go through the process of remaking you all over again in Jesus' name. And as he melts you, don't dodge. As he melts you, don't reject. As he melts you down so he can mold you, don't kick. And as he molds you to the image and to the picture and to the perfect pattern he wants in your life, don't say, I don't want that. It's going to make the best out of you in Jesus' name. And as he mends your life, 
as he monitors your life, as he mentors your life, and as he makes you the object of praise, you are going to be from tonight, you'll say yes to God. I say yes to God. With your hands raised, I say yes to God. With your hands up to heavens, I say yes to God. And so now, the Lord is going to give you a new ability. What you couldn't do before, you will do. He's going to give you new wisdom. He's going to give you new energy. Is going to give you new skill and that new energy and that new skill and that new personality that will stand firm and stand erect and then face the future and know I have a goal and is get you to the peak you will fly and you'll get to the mountain top in Jesus name I come to point number three now. Point number three, our reassurance while pursuing his mission towards men. Our reassurance. What reassurance has the Lord given you? Number one, he says, I will help you. Amen. Number two, he says, I will heal you. Amen. I didn't hear your amen on that one. Yeah. Number three, he says, I will hear you. Any cry, any call, you send an OSOS to heaven. He says, I'm always here for you. From this day, you will hear every prayer of your heart. Yeah. Number four, it will hold you. You will not fall. Yeah. You will not fall. Yeah. Strength, ability, agility, energy will come from heaven and the Lord will hold you in Jesus name five I will hide you when trouble is raging when there's calamity there problem there pandemic there every bad thing there the Lord will hide you in his pavilion I will hedge you everything you have the Lord will set a hedge around you that the enemy will not touch you and the powers of darkness will not touch you they will not touch your brain Somebody said, every time I'm going for exam, my brain gets hot. That's in the past. From now on, that brain will not get hot. Every time I'm going for an interview, every time I'm going for an interview like that, that's when a problem crops up at home. Myself and my wife, myself and my parents, we cannot see eye to eye. And it comes every time I'm going for an interview. And then when I get to the interview, I'm all confused and, you know, I'm not able to answer well. That's the past. That will not happen to you anymore. I will hate you and then... I will honor you. God has said is going to help you. Look at Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. That is, if you become a child of God, you give yourself to the Lord. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Underline that. I will help thee. Help will always come from above for you in Jesus name. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I see somebody here tonight, this year you will not fall again. Yeah. You will not fail again. Yeah. You will not falter, you will not miss your way in Jesus name. Number one, I will help you. Number two, I will heal you. Anytime, if you are sick, normally the Lord will keep you in good health. I said the Lord will keep you in good health. But should in case anytime sickness knocks at your door, you will not go and answer the door. Say, Christ, who abides in you, answer the door for me. 
and then when Christ answers the door for you, that sickness, that infirmity will flee away in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 17. It says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. I will heal thee of thy wounds. If you have any wound that has not healed for many years, it will heal you tonight. If you have any wound inside your intestine that you call ulcer, it will heal you tonight. If you have any wound and it's bringing out, um, you know, pores, whatever, I've tried and tried, I've applied notion or whatever, tonight I will heal you of your wound, says the Lord. Then at number three now, I will hear thee. Your prayer tonight, it will hear you. I say your prayer tonight, it will hear you. Look at Job chapter 22, verse 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy verse. Look at verse 28. It says, and thou shalt decree a thing. You will not beg. You will not cry. You know, when uh, the captain of an army or the military government wants to decree something, uh, uh, the captain, uh, the major general does not come over the radio, over the television, and then he's crying and crying, and he's saying, uh, I demand this, I declare this, and crying. Uh, uh. No, stand like a soldier tonight. As king's king that knows here is my father, and this is what my father wants. And with the voice of assurance, you will decree a thing, it shall be established unto thee. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And then he says, number four, he says, he will hold thee. It will hold your hand. I said it will hold your hand. I said it will hold your hand. I said chapter 41 verse 13 for I the Lord thy God will hold thy hand. He the Lord your God. Make him your Lord. Make him your God. Say he's my redeemer. He's my savior. And I surrender myself, my life totally unto him. And then I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help. Be. Number five, this that it will hide you. Psalm 27, verse 5. Uh, Psalm 27, verse 5. For in the time of trouble, it will hide me in his pavilion. It will hide you in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, it shall hide me. It shall set me up upon a rock. Number six, it will hedge you that Satan will not be able to touch everything he has provided for you. Job chapter 1 verse 10, Has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side and thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land that's me i said that's me i said that's me now it will honor you can you think, can you think of if the president of our country will single you out and honor you? What an honor. Can you think if the governor of our state will be searching for you and then says, I will honor you? Can you think if the university, the, the VC will be looking for you and they single you out? I will, I will honor you. Can you think if the uh, 
president of the most powerful nation in the world will uh, you know search for you and say i will i will honor you now can you think if the king of kings and the lord of laws if our creator our redeemer if the god of heaven singles you out and he says i will honor you i about that i said i about that but you draw back and say no i don't want honor you say no lord keep your honor i don't want your honor I don't think you'll do that. I think you'll run to the Lord and say, Lord, I've been waiting for that. I want that honor from heaven. That honor will bring every good thing in your life in Jesus' name. In Psalm, in Psalm 91, verse 15, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. You are not alone anymore. I will deliver him and honor him. And honor him. Yeah. And honor him. Yeah. There was somebody. He had an enemy. An enemy that set gallows for him. And his friends and family, they said, go to the king and tell the king, you demand the life of this man, your enemy, come and hang him there. And then the man rose up early in the morning. And he went to the king, and the king said, Who is there waiting for me? And he said, It's so and so. He said, Let him come in. And then before he said what he wanted to say, the king said, Now, I want to honor somebody. What do you think I should do to the man I want to honor? And this man said, Get the horse, you ride on, decorate it, and then your garb of royalty put upon that man and let the next man take him round the town and say, this is the man that the king has decided to honor. And then he said to Haman, get up and do that for Mordecai, your enemy. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has made announcement all over heaven, or all over the earth. I want to honor a boy. I want to honor a girl. I want to honor a young man, a young woman. I want to honor somebody there and is asking the angels, what should I do to that man, to that woman I am going to honor? And then uh, they said, the man you want to honor, lift him up. Let him have a ride and let him go through the whole world and give him the best position in life and give him the best position in his country and give him the best position in the universe and God said that is what I will do to that man to that woman and is talking about you the Lord will honor you where are you where are you today today has become a turning point in your life in Jesus name now, please, now, please, wait for me, wait for me, sit down first, sit down first, wait for me. I know that honor has come for you. I know that power has come for you. But, uh, you know, let me go through, let me go through my, you know, usual thing uh, to bring a special blessing to special people here. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to come to this God and you want to come to this one who is thinking the best of you, who is planning the best for you. You have been far away. He wants to draw you near and you want to draw near and you want to say, Jesus, be my savior. Jesus, be my Lord. If you will confess you with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead. He says thou shalt be saved. You will be saved. Salvation is coming to you right now. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You want to connect with this God who will give you a purpose driven life. You want to connect with this God who will make your life spectacular and your life different and bring the blessing and the honor of God 
God upon your life where are you raise up your hand if you are raising up your hand stand up right there it's a special day for you and it's a day remarkable in your life stand up where God bless you there God bless you there God bless you there God bless you there heaven is waiting for you to stand up heaven is waiting for you to indicate and to say Lord here I am I want the glory I want the help and I want all that heaven has for me raise up your hand and stand up while you're standing up tell the Lord Lord you have called me and I come you have invited me and I come and I give myself unreservedly wholeheartedly unto you save me forgive my sin change my life turn everything around in my life you will do it now. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you restoration. I'll give you redemption. I'll give you righteousness. And I'll give you the right ability to respond to all my goals in life for you. Keep on standing as I pray for you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we well, thank you at this time. And Lord, I pray all who have come sincerely today, receive them in Jesus' name. And I pray salvation will come to them now. I pray forgiveness will come to them now. I pray the freedom from heaven will come upon their lives now in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation settle in their hearts right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. We we'll call on our moderating minister tonight to come and help us during this uh, counseling period. And then I will come. There's healing, there is upholding, there is honor for everyone tonight in Jesus. At the children's section, if you are true, let me see your hand. Wave to me. 
if you raise up your hand and you got connected through the Lord Jesus Christ and you decided today don't go without your name being registered so that we can still come around to follow up on you and help you. At the youth section, counselors, if you are done, you can wave at me. Don't go yet. Miracle prayer is coming. And there shall be showers of blessings. You cannot afford to miss this. This weekend is a weekend of glorious touch of God upon your life. A weekend of launching you to become a star that no enemy can deem. I praise God for your life. Counselors, our leader in the children's section, are you true? Let me see you wave to me so that we can, the man of God is about to come up to pray. You will not miss your blessing. Stay where you are. I thank God for your comportment. I thank God for your readiness to receive the showers of miracles, signs and wonders. Get ready. Our children leader, how far? Are we true? Wave to me if you are true there. Yes. And the new section. Amen. We are now ready for the prayer of the man of God. And as the prayer comes, there will be miracles, signs, and wonders. You cannot go without the touch of God. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with you. Your honor from heaven has come. Forget the past. Focus on this new day. You will decree a thing. It shall be done unto you. Yeah. And that good thing you decree in your life. Don't change it after the prayer. Don't say negative after the prayer. Don't reverse it after the prayer. Every good thing that comes out of your mouth for yourself. Demanding of God. The Lord will do it for you tonight. Yeah. It will help you. Yeah. Wherever that money is coming from, that will get you to the place you ought to be, that money will come. Yeah. It will heal you. Whatever may be the wound or the sickness, it will heal you. Yeah. It will heal you. They will look at you as if you are the only one praying. And they will make heaven's miracle come upon you in Jesus' name. They will hold you up. If you are lame, if you are paralyzed and you stand, don't think you are going to fall, they will hold you. It will hide you. Evil eyes will not see you anymore. It will put a edge and edge around you. And then it will honor you. Angels will see you are a man of honor. You are a woman of honor. Your time has come. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We glorify you for your love, for your mercy, for your compassion, for your goodness for everyone. I bring everyone here, 
everyone online, everyone in every nation, everyone connected now, radio, television, anywhere. Lord, I pray that you will do what you have affirmed, you'll do for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, send help to everyone. Lord, heal every disease right now in Jesus' name. Lord, hear the prayer of the least to the greatest, everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, hold everyone up. Make everyone to stand. Every weakness in their lives, every infirmity in their lives, take it away in Jesus' name. Hide everyone from the evil eye. Hide everyone from the people that want to injure their lives. And all those demons and evil spirits, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, put an edge around them. A wall of fire around them. That any evil thing that wants to come in will be burnt up in Jesus' name. Lord, now honor. Lord, honor. To surprise the enemies of the people of progress, honor. And to make everyone get to the place you have ordained for them, Honor in Jesus' name. I pray that everything you have desired, everything you have declared, everything you have demanded, everything you have decreed, be given unto you right now in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. The Lord put testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Testimony 